Oh my god, this is hilarious. I don't know if you can see it. Welcome to the Age of Aquarius. <laughs> so yes, welcome. We are actually that song was written. Um, oh, when was that song written? So many years ago. Look, this says Fifth Dimension Age of Aquarius. Okay, so it says Fifth Dimension. Let the sun shine in. Welcome to the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Ooh, I love it! I'm into it! <laughs> I haven't really heard this song since I was like a little kid. But anyways, uh, hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, sorry I've been gone so long, but you know, that stuff's been happening. A lot has been happening this year. Um, that song was Welcome to the Age of Aquarius, and I kind of feel like 2020, you've kind of been like, uh, no, welcome to the inauguration year of the Age of Aquarius. <laughs> and I mean, I don't know if you're looking at it that way. I, I've, I've been kind of looking at it that way. It's kind of like I, I knew it was coming. Um, I knew it was coming, but I just didn't know what it would look like. And um, so, yeah, so I know I'm kind of taking a lighthearted approach in uh, <laughs> talking about everything that's been happening this year, but I will have to say that it's been very challenging. It's been very, very challenging for everybody on the planet. And um, myself included, I have been, you know, no different than that. I've been really, I, you know, I was doing well early this year. Like I moved into this cute little humble apartment in Woodland Hills, um, close to where I used to live. And I really liked it here. And then I started my makeup YouTube channel early, early this year. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was trying to like fit in and be like part of this makeup community that's extremely evolved and extremely, even though I've been in the industry for many years with doing Arbonne, I was like an Arbonne representative for like 10 years. And um, uh, I went to cosmetology school and, and learned how to do makeup and everything like that. But as far as like doing like makeup artistry and stuff like that, I really am into art. As you can see, I put some of my paintings behind me so that you can kind of see because um, we're going to actually talk about one of them. But um, yeah, doing makeup, I, I doing a makeup YouTube channel early this year, I kind of wanted to be... Um, current and like going with the flow of like what I felt was like out there because I wanted to um strengthen my abilities and feel feel part of the community I'm like Venus ruled so I have like a lot of like the artsy I have like tons of like artsy stuff in my astrology and like um kind of like old school art and vintage sort of things it actually in my astrology so I kind of wanted to I just like thought okay I'll I will try my best to do like these really awesome intense looks and they were it was really fun and everything but then I realized um is, is that it wasn't really showing too much of my personality which I feel like I was kind of hiding I'm gonna be honest I I, I feel like maybe I was kind of hiding my personality a little bit um I've just been trying to um, you know, understand what I want to, what, who I want to be when I grow up. 
because I still have Peter Pan syndrome. So I think I've just been kind of like, you know, going with life's flow and, you know, just seeing where the wave takes me kind of thing. And I really thought that I would be, I was really drawn to the makeup industry again. And even though I do other things, like I'm a chocolatier, I'm a Reiki master, I do energy work. Um, I um, have other hobbies, like I paint. Um, so I don't, I don't know. It was just kind of like when I was doing my makeup YouTube channel early this year, it was really cool and fun. But I felt like it was one a one dimensional side of me a one dimensional side of me and the reason why i'm going to why i said that twice is because i feel like things are changing and i feel like it it used to with my art it used to bother me that i was like really deep and like really like really deep and sometimes even dark you know like with my art um, when I paint, it comes out flowery and playful and joyful. When I songwrite, it comes out very, <laughs> I'm not kidding, like it comes out really, really dark and sad and um, uh, like I'm just looking at these words because all I have right now are story, stories of a life I, I don't get to live and all you have right now is your glory, glory of the life you made to live. So it's kind of like, a lot of my songs are like dark and I think that like it just all just didn't make sense to me and I never like decided to just it just didn't seem right things just didn't click is my point and that's okay I want to I'm here to tell you it's it's okay if things don't click for you um right away and um what I was going to say about the dimensional thing is I feel like this has been a very dimensional shift for me this year personally and I decided so I decided when I you know gonna try to do these I'm reorganizing or like revamping my YouTube channel and I want to show you more of myself and I want to show you more of my personality and what I do every day because just doing those makeup looks every day was getting a little bit redundant it was getting like the editing took forever and I want to be able to be more I feel like times have changed. This has changed us all and we're going to, it's not gonna feel right anymore to fit into fake, fakeness and like fitting in with this whole super incredibly stunning image. Like I, I just don't see a lot of that anymore and um, it just wasn't fitting for me anymore and it just didn't seem right so I kind of stopped which also isn't really good I, I don't like stopping something that you start that you still want to do so but everything stopped in the world okay hello like everything stopped <laughs> pretty much everything stopped so um I want to be able to show you we're going to do a little bit I'm going to do some dancing I'm going to do singing we're going to do we're going to paint on here sometimes we're going to be very deep and philosophical sometimes I'm gonna try to make this one a little bit more like balanced or whatever but um I just like thought I wanted to show you more of my personality and let's be together in this like let's kind of work together uh and hang out together in this crazy new world it's it's a whole new world it really is because it's just Everything is different, like nothing's the same. And our it, it's it's like the world is like crumbling. And when worlds crumble, only truth remains. So it's okay like to find truth. And you know, I wanna ask you, like, what's your truth? Like, what's truth to you if, our, if this world feels like it's crumbling away? Which it really isn't. I think that um, it's all an illusion. And, um, but what's truth to you? You know, like, let's just take this time, like, as an opportunity to kind of like think about like, what is truth? 
what is really here if things are going to crumble away what do we need to drum up in ourselves to to create something new and to be like okay like let's just roll with it like i actually okay maybe this is when i'll talk about this painting because i've been i've been trying to i've been thinking about this analogy like i, I learned how to surf years ago and like um it, it kind of made me think, like, this year has kind of made me think about what my um, surfing teacher taught me. Um, and he um, he told me that life, life is like, this is such a good analogy. Life is like the ocean when you're learning how to surf with, with your emotions and your feelings. And, and so he said, like, um when when you know like when you get up and you're surfing in life and you're like you're surfing on your surfboard and everything's like cool and everything and then like and then you fall off your board and then like you start to rip curl into the wave and like you um honestly if you haven't experienced what it feels like to surf it's really freaking scary okay it's like you do feel like you're gonna die like it's it can it can get very scary um so he said the best thing to do is to instead of work against the wave instead of trying to straighten out your body and like trying to get out of like the rip curl or whatever that's going he said be one be one with it okay now just imagine that for a second be one with the wave be one with it and roll with it roll with the energy roll with the with the power the raw divine godlike power which is how i always felt when i was surfing i always felt like the closest i ever felt to god like when i was surfing so just roll within that wave and like at the end of the cycle it will you'll together like release and then you can just like end up finding yourself like feeling the bottom of the floor of the of the ocean and then you can stand up and walk and you know pull your board because it's going to be like attached to your wrist so or your ankle I mean so yeah, I, I kind of I, I, I kind of feel like this year, I know I'm taking a lighthearted approach to this. I know there's been a lot, a lot going on, a lot of death and um, a lot of diversity and we are dealing with some very dark and light energy, but I decided to be creative with that. And I decided, um, after I did kind of, kind of like look at it that way, like look, look at all the dark, look at the light, look at, there's both darkness and light and it just, ah, I know it can be overwhelming, but we do have to kind of like search this stuff through, you know, and um, realize that there can't necessarily be one without the other or appreciating the light without dark and like all that kind of stuff and i've been painting like the last few years like with that like if you can see like the black and the white and like you know all that kind of stuff has been re a recurring element for me right now and you know it it's it's fine so I actually did decide to take that kind of like idea of like the ocean and the polarities sorry I'm an energy worker the polarities that are there constantly directing us and forcing us you know and and then it's just kind of like okay time to make some you know creative art with that so here's the painting that i started working on and this is like kind of like well you can interpret like the heart how you think the heart is but this is my dark and light ocean and as you can see i painted like this the uh, shark in the dark tumultuous 
tumultuous ocean and then like there's a dolphin swimming in this beautiful like fluttery like side of the ocean and like uh, some allure because there's always some allure to the dark side and the deep side like when I went swimming as a girl I used to love the deep end of the pool and you know so like there's always that allure right and uh anyways so I that that's my ocean and we can paint sometime together and I did like a tie-dye I, I did a tie-dye um sky and then this is my sun I kind of wanted to make it like look like a flower because as you can see I kind of like paint with like a lot of flowers so I kind of did that and then like I wanted to show you like sometimes I use some of my makeup products to do some of the details <laughs> to do some of like the details on my paintings I'll use like like I used white eyeliner to create some of the ocean waves and stuff like that so I'm just kind of a dork and it's also very whimsical. Um, I did like a Bob Ross like makeup YouTube channel. Maybe I'll link it. It was it was kind of cute. You know how he like, he's so cute. He's like, oh, that, um, that bird didn't turn, or like, no, something like that didn't turn out right. Oh, turn it into a bird or something like that. Like if you made the wrong stroke or like you made a mistake, just turn it into something beautiful. He's so cute. I actually never really watched those videos, but I did look up some of his quotes when I did my video. So I actually think that's really cool style right now. I think painting is really cool right now for, for 2020. Like painting art, getting more in tune with like our feelings, our senses. I'm into that. Let's do it let's do it I, um I'm, i've also been very into like scents like aromas and um i'm since i'm a chocolatier i'm into i have a good palate and i'm into like you know tasting we'll do a chocolate we'll do a chocolate tasting on here too but i'm into that and i i started getting into like i started wearing the last couple months i started wearing like um for my uh, aromatherapy, I started putting like the actual orange, like oil, like all over my body. And then it be kind of, kind of became this thing where it was just like, I kept, and I didn't know why. And, um, and I found this like really interesting perfume that has orange blossom in it. Cause I found I was actually attracted to like orange blossom and I just think this is really funny. Have you ever, have you guys ever read like, like I bought like in like a couple months ago when I started getting into like scents again, cause I've only ever liked, only ever liked five perfumes in my entire life. Like five. And I'm a woman. How does that even work? <laughs> like usually like women have like tons and tons of like perfumes that they like. I have been so picky that uh, there's only like a few that I actually really like. So, um, um, went to Sephora and you know, because of the lockdown and everything, you, even perfumes are closed. Okay. So like you can't go into the men's section and smell cologne and you can't smell like women's like cologne. Right. So how do you buy perfume if you can't smell it? <laughs> So this has been like an exercise for me in how to develop, how to develop that sense of like what you think you want to smell and how it's going to make you feel and all that. Cause I bought, I bought Juliet, like a Juliet has a gun. Like I like that brand. I bought another Ode and I, I, um, I really like that one, but there was a different scent and I couldn't try it at the store and I bought it and it's so Sucked. Oh my god, it was so bad. It was like it was so strong. It smelled like an old lady. And I just I really didn't like it. And it, it's just so I thought, okay, this time when I want to get an orange blossomy one, I'm gonna look at like the reviews, you know, because you have to read. If you can't smell, you're gonna have to read. So I came across this one perfume and I did end up buying it. I'll just show it to you. It's Arquiste Um Perfume. And it's called Fleur de Louis. And there's what the bottle looks like. It's really pretty. Um, 
it's it's a it's a French perfume which I wasn't really sure like if I was gonna like the way that um, it it uh, smells but here I'll read the actual what it says um, June 1660, Isle of Pheasants, Basque region on the French-Spanish border. To ensure peace between them, two royal courts converged at a richly appointed pavilion built of freshly cut pine and cedar wood. From the French side, a golden aura of iris, rose, and jasmine. Wait, where's the orange blossom? Okay, it emerges young Louis the Fourteenth and starched and composed, eager to catch a glimpse of his new bride, the Infantata Maria Teresa. So, um, okay, that's interesting because I thought it had, I thought it said it had orange blossom. It kind of does. Anyways, they gave me a little book booklet of all of the different ones, but you have to hear some of the... <laughs> Some of these reviews are like really interesting because actually the entire brown brand sounds kind of cool. Oh, and by the way, Fleur de Louis is a unisex cologne. Guys, guys, my guy, my guy friends watching this, you can wear this too. And I did have. Uh, I, I'm gonna try to have guys smell it and see if they like it. I think it smells col very cologne -y. So that was another reason why I wanted to get this. I actually really, really wanted something that was like super balanced between like masculine and feminine energies. I don't know, not that I've been going towards that way, but I just like thought it would be cool to have something that was like super balanced. Anyways, this person is giving a review of the perfumes from the creator that made them. His name is Carlos Huber, the, the perfume creator from Arquiste. Uh, so um, let me, um, I'll read the parts that were different from the one that Arquiste. It says, um, must be meant to represent King Louis, as I have meeting himself in the Spanish bride, Maria Teresa. I smell nothing childlike or innocent in this fragrance. The <laughs> Was it supposed to be? I don't know. Uh, the note list here is again brief, orange flower Florentine. Okay, orange flower, there we go. <laughs> It's orange flower, um, which is slightly bitter. Back note, um, beautiful white glamour of floral. Um, it smells like they the woods are slightly sharp too, like they have just been cut green and hastily erected, but they soften and warm as the fragrance ages and blends with your chemistry. I actually really like the way that this guy explains it. So it just kind of talks about like how long it can last. And then there's this other one that he makes. It sounds really super intriguing that I want to try since I'm a chocolatier. Listen to this review. Anima Dulces. November 1695, Mexico City. We are to be transported to a nunnery where they make chili chocolate for centuries. Well, these nuns are a horny bunch. <laughs> Ripe, slightly aroused, and lactating. Lactating? Oh my god. This chocolate, but for the, is, this is chocolate, but for the dirty bitch in us all. Yes, it starts out sweet and gourmand, but the problem is when you smell good enough to eat, someone will. <laughs> hee hee, it, it does, it does laugh. The main accords. We are supposed to be smelling, according to the blurb, are cocoa absolute, Mexican vanilla, cinnamon, and chili and chili infusion. They have kept it streamlined and simple on paper, but is anything but the cocoa is delicately bitter, almost burned, the vanilla is clean, fleshly and sensual like oh my god, I don't even know if I can read this. Fleshly and sensual like privates the day after a wax. Okay. <laughs> the 
the cinnamon and chili sizzle and the dry down is hot, healthy, sweaty, humanary, humanity in a cupcakery. Four to five hours is a long wear time before it comes skin scent and stays longer while lost to me, but still smellable. So anyways, I just thought that was really interesting and I thought like, it would be interesting to give you the difference between, um, but I highly, you know, like this brand, Arquiste, I'll link it below, but they actually really do have some really interesting perfumes. And that one does call out to me, like I wanna get a sample. They ha they sell like samples of like what, you know, you can try. Um, but this one does smell amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, it does, it does go away, but I can picture it. I can picture it. It's very French, and I wanted to get some of those memories back of like French. I'm, I've been getting, I don't know about you, all these freaking plagues and revolts, and I've been getting French Revolution vibes. So I wanted to, uh, I wanted to embrace that and kind of like sens sensual, sensually. And anyways, I highly recommend to um to do that to read more reviews if you're gonna if you're gonna do perfumes I wanted to, to mention that i'm wearing um i want to i'm gonna take my laramar off i want to like try to encourage people to wear um gemstones are very important like maybe i should just do a whole video on this but like gemstones are very important um for healing and I'm wearing Moldavite today and I have a few pieces I also oh I don't have my ring wait where is it okay I don't have my ring but I also have a Moldavite ring also um so it's a very very deep dark green and I was really drawn to it um have you ever have you ever like had somebody put like a like a stone in your hand or whatever and you're just like they're like here feel it here like feel it and you're like what the f feel it and that's how i was originally before i started being a gemstone collector and like i can i, I can actually i can really like i can seriously feel them now and actually i do crystal healings and stuff like that um pull out my nerd glasses but um but yeah so so mold, I, I've been drawn to Moldavite incredibly the last couple days, but I wanted to like read to you because it's actually a very cool gemstone. Like when, when I remember, I used to watch JTV and JTV is a, I don't know if they're still around since this is a whole new world, but like JTV was this like um, channel that not only sold really beautiful jewelry and gemstones, but they also kind of explained a lot about the stone and the history. I learned so much on that channel. Like maybe it's kind of like, you know, QVC or something like that for the gemstone world, but I learned so much and like everybody that watched it with me, they're like, wow, this is cool, you know? So we used to learn a lot. And anyway, Moldavite is a very popular stone among witches, mystics, and healers. It's considered a high vibrational stone and it gives the what's called the Moldavite flush. So what that means is usually when you wear it, you can feel like you can feel the heat and you get a little bit warm. I think that's why if you notice, <laughs> Well, I have my have my body hasn't gotten used to it, but like you know, I'm just like, whew. It's it's a very high high uh, high energy stone, and I, I just like I just I was drawn to it. See, I'm always drawn to what I need, and you know that's the other thing is um, paying attention to that. Like I encourage you all to pay attention and listen to your body a little bit more. You know, stuff like this. But this says, as far as like the occult deep, dark, interesting side of Moldavite. Um, it's believed to enhance psychic and healing abilities, give access to the Akashic records, hello, Woo. accelerate the personal evolution of the light body, good stuff, good stuff, 
induces astral projection, very good stuff, and shamanic journeying, and open one up to higher levels of compassion. Moldavite is believed to stimulate all the chakras with particular focus on the heart chakra. Just as Moldavite is the union of heaven and earth, so is the heart chakra the union of higher and lower chakras. However, it has a rich history in occult lore that many are aware of. Okay, well, this became a little bit more interesting than I even had even. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna go into the rest of the legends. Oh my God! Now this is talking about like the archangel Michael and Lucifer. Like, okay. I'm going to put this link and you can read it at your leisure. <laughs> Anyways, this is an interesting, I knew it was interesting enough to like comment that this is like, you know, Moldavite. I knew, I knew I needed to mention that I'm wearing Moldavite because it's a really interesting stone, but I, I never realized it was so controversial. Whew. All right. So anyways yeah you might want to look that up it's it's a worthwhile read <laughs> but yeah this was just like kind of like hello back i'll be back i'll be back and i'll be posting some videos for you and um we'll do some art and we will um do some uh yeah we'll do some art we'll do some chocolates we'll do some painting we'll do we'll do we'll do stuff like that We'll do me because that's just actually me who I am and you know maybe this is a different world and now that we're going to be in and maybe we do have to internalize and breathe and meditate and you know realize what's really true and what's really there and and what we want to embrace right now so yeah so thank you for joining me um i look forward to our next time together and um welcome to the inauguration of the age of aquarius bye hello okay this is really weird this is trippy with the venus of walden 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 dwarf <laughs>